Hello again from AM Builds. Today's video gives an overview of a crosscut jig I made to enable me to make accurate 90 degree cuts, including squaring off a full 8x4 foot board. There are lots of videos on YouTube showing variants of and homemade derivatives of the excellent MFT table made by Festool, but with my little shop I haven't got the space for such a table and the Festool crosscut capacity is limited. I wanted to be able to accurately machine the full 8 foot long side and cross cut a full 4 foot short side at exact right angles and this is what I came up with. My new bench, video link below, is now my main work surface and is slightly less than a full sheet. And so I started with this leftover, larger than half a sheet, piece of 18mm batch ply that could sit across the bench overlapping at both front and back. The build starts on my old bench and due to a serious shoulder injury I was struggling with greatly reduced use in my right arm, something that has fortunately slowly improved as the months have gone by. I squared the sheet to 1400 by 1200 millimetres and made it into an MFT sheet using the method in my video of how I made my new bench top. See that one for more information. Having machined the 96mm grid, I found the sheet was awkward to handle and weighed 215 kilos, or just over 47 pounds. With only one functioning arm, I could not lift it up or place it flat on my own, and so had to lighten it to make that easier. Using my Prusia Mini 3D printer, I made a circular template to use with my Festool OF 1400 router, with an insert and plain bit. This allowed me to remove some two-thirds of the thickness of the ply in between every other row of 20mm grid holes. At each point I plunged to depth and removed the waste with a minimum of fuss. Having once knocked the depth gauge and not noticed spoiling a workpiece, I now tend to tape it over with a bit of masking tape. Once the circles were cut, I used a rounding off bit in my old Black & Decker router to smooth the edges to prevent splinters. That reduced the weight by 2.3 kilos or 5 pounds down to 19.2 kilos or 42.2 pounds. I then 3D printed a second template to allow the routing of long hand sized slots to let me lift up the sheet and I created two rows of hand holes as you can see. Using the OF 1400 I cleared the slots from one side and then rounded the edges with the roundover bit. Flipping the sheet, I could then use the template in the grid to accurately duplicate the hole positions on the other side without the need to plunge right through into a sacrificial sheet, and followed that by rounding everything over. Are you enjoying this video? Did you know that there is about 20 hours of editing to make these 10 or 11 minutes? In order to keep going, we need you to subscribe. That way YouTube will feature us more, bring more views, and give us some income to invest in the channel. Please subscribe now and thank you for your support. I printed a round and a D-shaped insert for my circular template to allow me to take out a smaller circle or D-shape in all remaining spaces, rounding them afterwards. A lot of work admittedly, but good physio for me at the time and an enduring benefit of easier handling. I ended up at 15.9 kilos or 35 pounds a reduction of 5.6 kilos or more than 12 pounds and more importantly I could lift it up and put it flat down on the bench on my own. The board still feels stiff and I have the benefit of the full thickness for the dogs and the other parts which I wouldn't have had if I'd started with a 12 mm sheet. I finished the board with my usual sealer, Zinza seal coat diluted by a third with clear denatured alcohol. I had seen a video on YouTube by Conkcat showing a shop made crosscut device using two hinges and I acknowledge that below. My blacksmith friend welded two mild steel ball bearing fire door hinges together and added two half rail joiners at the appropriate spacing for my Festool rails. The joiners were actually a Makita spare part but it worked fine and cost me less. Functional rather than pretty was the result a description that could perhaps be levied at me too, I suspect. Using a piece of plywood screwed underneath the main board, I was able to place the compound hinge in an appropriate place. 
I had recently treated myself to the long 3 metre festool rail and I had a spare 1.4 metre rail that I could use up permanently on the crosscut, but it could also have fitted and removed a rail as needed. Using two of the guide pups from my UJK cam and wedge clamping set, I was able to butt the ply against them and take a guess at the position of the rail to make a parallel cut, estimating, badly as it turned out, where the groove in the rail would end up. It was then time to design and 3D print the locating device to fix the rail in position, and this is the shape of it. Two pegs located into the MFT, and the top index part fits without slop in the groove on the underside of the rail. The thickness of the plate matches the plywood being used. The first cut was well away from straight, 34.22mm at the bottom versus 29.61 at the top, and some schoolboy geometry was then applied to work out how far to move the index part of the positioning device. The plywood was 944mm long, and the effective length of the rail is 1355mm from the hinge fulcrum to the start of the index pin. Therefore, the index part needs to be moved by 1355 divided by 944 multiplied by the error of 4.61 millimetres and therefore the initial adjustment is 6.62 millimetres to the right as viewed from the front of the bench. A second test cut was made, much improved but there was still a small discrepancy of a fraction of a millimetre and so I reprinted with a tiny correction. This gave me an error of 0.015 mm over the 944 mm plywood, good enough for me to start printing the locating devices for the various ply thicknesses with which I use. A limitation in the support function of my 3D software was giving me bent prints and unattractive bridged areas, so I flipped the design 180 degrees and filled the space between the 20mm pegs with circular pipe supports which were easily cut off after printing. That improved the print quality greatly. I added in a number according to the ply thickness and produced five pieces for 4, 6, 9, 12 and 18mm. My test cut with the 12mm locating device gave me a cut within 0.01mm along about an 850mm piece of ply, easily good enough for my purposes and indeed accurate within any reasonable assessment of how accurately I could actually measure. I have had years of working on a plain bench and since 2007 routinely using a TS55 track saw with a sacrificial sheet and this working pattern has long preceded my new MFT style bench top and this way of working is likely to be my most frequent and here the jig is demonstrated squaring a full board as such. The first task with any board is to have a reference edge and here we clean up the factory edge and mark the soon to be 90 degree corner. With the full board a few scraps of 18mm ply are added to the bench to support the sheet. With it being a full sheet the locator dogs are put in the holes nearest the hinge, but with smaller cuts the dogs can be nearer the front of the bench, as appropriate for a more comfortable cut. This is a 12mm or half inch board, so the 12mm locator piece is selected and fitted in the bottom space. We're lowering the rail, which has a pull-push movement to ensure the rail is flat along the entire width of the board. We check that the board is against the back dogs and we check that we're still in line with where we want to cut and we make the cut. And that's it. A smaller cut being made here Notice the dogs are now in a forward position for cutting convenience with the third dog on the waist side. A scrap is used near the hinge and the same pull and push movement made to flatten out the rail. Here we are cutting down almost a full sheet to make three equal pieces for a sacrificial cover for the bench. 
As the measurement is being made from the squared off right side, I am using a homemade calf guide to allow me to place the rail, the required 2.2mm, to the left for my TS55 blade. I 3D printed this one, but I believe the original idea came from Strawbite and a list below their Etsy shop site, a very useful addition to any rail saw user's toolbox. I wanted my crosscut jig to be flexible in use and the jig can also be used on the MFT style top by fixing it in place with power lock dogs. These are the initial production run power lock dogs from David Reisinger, a friendly, resourceful and talented engineer and they are now sold through TSO products with the link below. I bought them to fix my bench sides to the bench but they work for this just as well and locate the jig anywhere on the bench as needed by the cuts. This then allows the use of a simple stop clamped to the bench. Note I would normally only use clamps on the bench edge with the tail downwards for safety but where this is unavoidable I have them flagged with high contrast scaffer tape to reduce the chance of injury. Alternatively, the jig can be overlapped over the end of the bench for shorter cuts using a Festool clamp. Finally, using my second pair of power lock dogs, I have added a second piece of MFT style board. This allows the use of a rail system and that makes repetitive cutting using a flagstop very convenient. I hope you found the video of interest and please remember to like, subscribe and if you don't mind, click the notification bell for the next one. I am happy to answer any questions to the best of my ability and also to receive any guidance or suggestions which might form the basis of a follow-up video as I use the jig more. Once again, thanks to my son Malcolm who edits and produces the channel. See you soon. Goodbye.